Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can connect elastic motions in a really kind of innovative way using uh, text logos and a single simple prop. So we're going to be basically recreating the project you can find in your project tab under project templates and under demos you can find a project called, where is it, connecting elastic motions right here. I've already had this loaded up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it back and see what we're going to be recreating here. So you can see we're going to have a prop that comes bouncing in. It's a little uh, beach ball thing. It's going to decelerate, drop on these words here, and then be uh, pounded over to this side over here. All right, so that's essentially that's what we're going to be recreating. Now, there is some camera movement involved here, but we've already kind of done it. We're not going to be messing too much with the camera. Um, you can go up here to camera record mode and change it back to preview mode. And then we'll just zoom out a little bit. And let's take a look at what it looks like without the camera movement. Okay, so we'll have a very simple uh, overhead look or overview here. Oops, we need to go back up to the top there, I guess. All right, so we'll just play back from here. So you can see ball falls there. Just comes up like that. Falls on the combination and pow is pounded over here. All right, so pretty simple to uh, recreate. We're going to do that in a couple of shakes of a lamb's tail here. So let's get started. So I'm going to stay in preview mode here. I'm going to press F3 and go into my timeline. And uh, with the timeline, I'm going to make sure we have the uh, prop selected that we want to select, this beach ball right here. You can also go to object related track over here and that'll automatically open the tracks for the object that you select. And we'll go to our motion track. So you can see there's a bunch of elastic motions here indicated by the green color of the clips and we can scrub through the timeline just like this. Now if you want to delete all these, you can you know click and drag and delete all of them, select them that way. Or another way you can do it is if you want to delete everything in the entire uh, track, you can just double click the motion track right here, the motion text, and it'll select everything in that track. And then you can just go ahead and press delete. All right, so let's take a closer look at how we're going to get started here. So I'm going to zoom in on this connecting section right here. And uh, you can see there's nothing really on the screen right now, but at frame 50, we'll have a... Uh, little ball up here. Now what we want to do here is we want to have an entrance uh, elastic motion start at this point. So right at frame 51 or at frame 50, it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead at frame 50 and I'm going to go to my first elastic motion clip down here and we're going to apply our first elastic motion which is a entrance clip and it's called roll bounce. Okay, so there's one called roll bounce right here. Let's just go ahead and apply that. Double click and you can see it'll bounce in from the side. Now, obviously, we don't want it bouncing in from the side. We want it to kind of be uh, bouncing in from the top. So what's, what we're going to do is we're going to get into our editing here. So I'm going to double click the clip and it'll open up our elastic motion editor. And what we're going to do is make sure that the entrance uh, point, which is this little blue uh, highlighted box right here, we want to make sure that's from the top. So let's go ahead and just click and drag that all the way to the top. doesn't really matter which frame you do this at. Uh, we'll go to make sure it's that... Uh, zero on the x-axis so it's all even right there and uh, uh did you do just move it up a little bit there we go so now it'll be something like this if we just go preview we have it falling down on the connecting uh text right there okay so that's what we want and then the next thing we're going to apply is we're going to apply a movement clip another entrance clip it's called move decelerate all right so let's go to the frame after this clip and we'll close down our elastic motion editor and under entrance there should be one called move decelerate now we can use move accelerate or move decelerate i'm just going to apply move decelerate now uh, so you can see what happens and right when we apply it notice that it goes from the original root of the uh, of the prop there it goes from like way back over there so what we want to do is we want to align this clip to the ball so the in order to get to this point, align the entire uh, clip to this point right here where the, ball, where the ball is at the end of the previous clip. Then we need to go anywhere, on anywhere, it doesn't really matter on the clip. We can just right click it and select align to ball. What's going to happen there is that's going to align the beginning position to the end position of the previous clip. All right, so very, very useful little tip there. And then we have this uh, move uh, decelerate at this point. We don't want it to be decelerating, so we're going to just double click the clip again and we're going to start from here and go to here. Now we can change this to an exit clip. So right here is, it's another entrance clip, so this is where we're going to be ending up. But we want it, we want to modify the exit point. So in this case, we want to make sure it's an exit clip. Okay. And now it'll start from here. So again, we need to right click 
and align to ball and it'll align it to here and then we can change the exit point to right over here where it kind of um, starts accelerating or decelerating okay so now even though this is decelerate right now we want to make sure it rolls a couple times too so we can go over here to rotate we can switch to rotation unit maybe uh, one or we can switch to degrees maybe 360 just enter in a value of 360 there all right and then we have a uh, this kind of uh, rolling to that point okay so decelerating okay now we don't want that to be decelerating we want it to actually be accelerating so in this time we're in this case we're going to go to motion curve and change from decelerate to accelerate okay and then we have it accelerating towards because obviously momentum is carrying it faster downhill i guess all right so we have that deceleration or acceleration rather to this point right here and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to actually click uh, on this clip i'm going to copy it and right click and select uh, copy or just control c and I'm going to paste it again right over here. So we don't need to apply another clip every time. We can also just, you know, use copy and paste for a lot of these clips. Now, again, we need to do the same thing. Right click and select align to ball. Okay. So it aligns to that point where we start, where we stopped. And then we have an acceleration, you know, up to this point, which is obviously not what we want again. Now, it's very important to note that you want to make sure that you're in the elastic motion editor uh, position or in uh, elastic motion editor mode here. If you're not in that, if you're in motion curve mode, notice the, the, the selection box for your prop is red. And if we change that, it's actually going to change the transform position of our prop. If we go to transform track, it'll create a keyframe there, which we do not want. So I'm going to press, uh, you can see if I do that, we're going to have like a weird kind of floating uh, which doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm going to press Control Z and undo that. And you can double click, make sure you are in elastic motion editor mode before you do this, okay? And then the ending point is going to be right at the uh, pre precipice of the E, so right at the end of the E right there. So now we have this, zoop. but we don't want to accelerate, we want to decelerate in this case again, so motion curve, decelerate, okay? And it might be a little bit too far. Uh, Let's just change that position to something about there. I think that should be good. Okay, so we can preview that. And then preview again. We'll go over here, select this one, preview this one. And then it's going to drop. So let's go ahead and just play back from the beginning at this point. It bounces, we have it tilting, and decelerating. Okay, all right, so the next thing we're going to apply is we're going to apply another bounce. So the same bounce that we had in the first clip, we can actually just copy that, control C, and paste it over here, okay? And again, of course, we're going to need to align it to the ball, okay? So align to ball, the position. Okay, so then we have dropping just like this, which is fine and dandy. We have it dropping from here, just dropping on that combination, which is okay. Everything looks fine and dandy in that situation. So we're not gonna really change much there, we just want to make sure we align it to the ball, have it fall on that. We can increase the strength if we want a little bit, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit uh, in the next uh, section here. So after it bounces onto the combination, now what I want to do here is I don't want this to bounce, but we're going to apply our next clip first. I'm going to show you why. So right after the uh, bouncing clip applies, we're going to try another entrance clip. This one's going to be found in the elastic clip uh, folder here. We're going to use this throw in, okay? We actually want it to kind of like roll, bounce a little bit to the side. So we want it to th uh, throw throw it in basically along the combination word. So we're going to uh, just double click throw in. And again, first item of business here is to right click and select align to the ball again. Just close down our transform track there to avoid distractions. So now we have this bounce like that and then bounce like that. So it doesn't really make sense that it's bouncing, stopping, and then bouncing again. So what I'm going to do instead of this roll bounce, I'm going to change this. We're going to change it to an accelerate again. So motion curve, let's just choose accelerate. So just like that. Elastic motion editor, you can see it's rotating 360 degrees, which is okay. Uh, it's actually rotating negative 360 degrees. So just like that. And then it's, it'll start bouncing over here. Okay, so we have that land and then bounce. Okay, so that's the, what we want right there. Now, obviously here we want to change this to exit again and, uh, you know, uh, align to the ball again. So we're going to have it land right there. We don't want it to bounce over there. We want it to bounce over here. 
where, right where the eye is going to hit it. Okay, so then we have this. Just like that, it'll bounce over here. And, um, you know, rotating a couple times. We can maybe rotate it, uh, you know, 480 degrees or uh, let's go 720, something like that. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit additional uh, rolling going on there. And then here, we're just going to copy this move accelerate. Actually, we don't need to copy this one. Let's go ahead and just apply a brand new one at this point. Okay, so right here, don't worry about the timing of the eye right now. We'll uh, switch that a little bit. Right after this, we're going to apply another one, another entrance clip. We'll call this move damp. All right, so I'm just going to double click move damp. And again, the first thing I want to do, align it to the ball. And then we have this. Okay, so we want to be moving over to this O under motions, the second O, we want it to end up there. That's where we want it to end up essentially. So let's go ahead and whoop, again, we're going to double click it. We're not going to, uh, we're going to change it to an exit again and just align it to our uh, ball. So you know, and it'll go over there, but not far enough. We want it to go way over here to end up at the O. Now what we can also do is we can also scale it down. Since it's a little bit large for the O, let's just go over here and at the very end, we're going to have it scale down. So uh, it'll end up right here. And we're gonna scale that O down nicely, just like this. Place it over the O, a little bit overlap, that's okay. And then we have it, you know, beginning, at the beginning it's a uh, regular scale. Let's just move it over here a little bit. And then kind of uh, damp and go forward and then backwards to settle at the O. And here we want to obviously rotate uh, quite a bit. Let's rotate something like uh, maybe uh, 1080 degrees. 1080. Let me just preview that. But uh, in this case, we're kind of rotating it backwards. Let's try uh, negative 1080 there. Okay. Kind of hard for the naked eye to see at this point. A lot of rotation going on, but you can kind of basically see it rotating backwards right there. Okay. All right. So we're pretty much done with everything. Uh, let's just fix that little eye timing uh, on the letter I there. Let's move over here. Close down our elastic motion editor. Let's select our I. We can close down the ball right now since we're pretty much done with that. Let's go to the transform track. So where the I is, is uh, you know, moving is a little bit too early, obviously, for our uh, purposes. So we can just go ahead and make sure that starts to hit the ball at frame, what is it, 240? All right, so let's move this over to about, about frame 240 is where we want the middle uh, keyframe there to hit the hit the actual ball. Okay, so we'll start here and then boom, just like that. Okay, so rolls boom, and bounces over there. Okay, so we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and go back into record mode with our camera here and take a look. So we're going to record mode here, frame one, let's press play. Bounces, okay, so far so good. Accelerate, decelerate, but our camera moves down a little bit too quickly and moves over here too quickly. So what we need to do is adjust the camera timing. So we're gonna go ahead and close down our uh, eye uh, track right now. And we'll go into our camera track under project. You can find that under here if it's not already open. Uh, go to camera right here, and the camera has keyframes, position keyframes, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I'm holding Alt and scrolling my mouse button to zoom in out of the timeline, by the way. Uh, so right about here, the camera is staying stationary, and then here it's dropping, but it's dropping too quickly. So what we want to do is we want to take these two keyframes right here and move them a little bit further along. How far along? Well, yet, we're yet to find out. Okay, so right here, where does it land on this O? Right about here. So we want our second keyframe to be at about frame 210 here. Let's take these ones and move them a little bit further along as well. All right. So this one, we want the second keyframe to end at about frame 210, I believe it was, right? Okay. And then moving over here. And then this keyframe. So this is the beginning of the camera movement over here. So when it hits the eye, it is about frame 241. So we'll move these two over to frame 241. 
and then it's not getting there fast enough. So we want to make sure we take this, these three last keyframes, move them up quite significantly, I think. And then no. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit, maybe not even fast enough. Let's take, let's go zoom in a little bit more. Take this one. So we have it, uh, and this is actually the camera rotating as well. So let's take this and we're going to have these two last keyframes a little bit faster as well. Okay. So, okay. Cool. All right. So I think we're done there. Let's go ahead and uh, play back from the beginning. So we have our uh, ball bouncing, rolling, decelerating, and Okay, everything looks okay. So that's basically how you can recreate that project, you know, just using a couple simple tricks with the uh, elastic motions, entrance and exits. You can adjust the, uh, you know, rotation, scale, and, uh, and different uh, motion curves for different uh, animations and everything like that. And also, you know, uh, you can animate the props in the background of your scene, such as that letter I. And, of course, camera movement is very important as well. So I think that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Hopefully you learned a lot there, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out our forums at forum.relusion.com and our other CTA3 tutorials as well. And I'll see you next time.